Good Friday to you. Hope your weekend and your new year is off to a great start. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us on More Sports and Less. In the weekend, winner's edition, I'm Dave Bacon. It is the final weekend of the NFL regular season, and our Cleveland Browns have their playoff destiny in their own hands. It's very simple for the Browns. Win, and you are in. Beat the Steelers with their backup quarterback in, and you make the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. Of course, whenever we talk Browns football, we bring in Dan Lobby, Browns beat reporter from here on Cleveland.com, as well as in the pages of The Plain Dealer. Dan, appreciate the time. Things got a whole lot more interesting when Mike Tomlin named uh, Mason Rudolph the starting quarterback for this. Uh, of course, uh, Miles Garrett, Mason Rudolph, the last time they were on the field together, um, he was playing pinata with Mason Rudolph's head and his helmet. So are you concerned at all about Miles Garrett not going full after it and getting after it and being a little concerned just because of the history between him and the guy that's going to be playing quarterback. You know, I, I think Miles has done such a good job of putting what happened last season behind him and uh, kind of putting all of that in the rearview mirror. That's actually something Mike Tomlin referred to today when, when he talked about how the Steelers were approaching this. I, I think Miles is going to be Miles Garrett. I don't think he's going to pull back any. I think if he has an opportunity to sack Mason Rudolph, he's going to do it. I, I think the thing that he won't do is I don't think he's going to make a big deal out of this story. I, I think this thing is so far removed in his mind. You know, he's come so far as a person and a player. I, I just don't know how much impact this is going to have, but this is a really good test for Kevin Stefanski and his coaching staff to make sure that these players are focused on what really matters, and that's winning to get into the playoffs and not exacting revenge on Mason Rudolph. What are you setting the over-under on uh, the telecast for the number of times we see that clip slash hear about it? Uh, it's important to note, Mason Rudolph has not been good when he's been put in there. The thing people forget is he threw three interceptions in that start against the Browns the last time he got to start. Right, he played really poorly in that game. And Miles Garrett actually had a good game that, that week, even though he didn't register a sack in that game. He actually played really well. And, you know, I had talked to some Steelers fans when, when the Steelers made the, the choice to go to Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph was playing so poorly uh, that they were kind of hoping that the NFL would actually suspend him, too. They didn't do that. He ended up playing a little more before he got benched. Listen, we're going to hear about this all throughout the telecast. I'm sure we'll see it right off the bat. I'm sure they're going to talk about it over and over again. And, and I think Miles Garrett is going to have a big game. I think he wants to make a statement as far as NFL Defensive Player of the Year is concerned. You've got T.J. Watt. Uh, potentially playing on the other side. So I think Miles is going to want to make a statement here in, in this final game that goes beyond uh, you know, what happened last year with Mason. Any intrigue or difference um, in this game, given the fact that the Browns may very well face the Steelers in the first round of the playoffs? If they beat the Steelers in Week 17, that's uh, probably the most likely scenario is the Browns and Steelers would match up in Week 1 of the playoffs. Right. I mean, I think I, I wonder if it, this sort of means that the Steelers want to play it a little bit safe and, and not show a whole lot. Obviously, the Browns know what the Steelers do. There's lots of film out there. They've played against the Steelers and Big Ben. But, uh, you know, maybe the Steelers don't want to throw out any wrinkles this week. Maybe they keep the game plan really simple because it just seems like they don't really care if they end up with the number two or the number three seed. They're fine if Buffalo ends up getting that second seed or if, you know, things work out and they end up getting that seed. That's fine by them. They just want to get to the playoffs healthy and playing you know, relatively well in their last half of football at full strength against the Colts was a really good half of football. So I, I think they have some confidence, and I think we might see a, a little bit of a vanilla approach here from the Steelers on Sunday. Yeah, you know, when I was diving into the preparation for this, it surprised me. The Steelers are the worst running team in the NFL uh, by a number of metrics. Fewest yards gained per game, fewest yards per carry, uh, the thing that concerns you, though, is, you know, James Conner has been really good against the Browns. He, he has five career games against the Browns. He's averaging almost five yards a carry, over 80 carries, and five touchdowns. So, so that's a guy that you don't want to get running against uh, Cleveland. The, the good news is coming off a quad injury, so they may decide, you know, eh, 10 carries and you're good, James. I mean, Browns fans, if they've only watched James Conner run against the Browns, probably think this think this guy is like Nick Chubb, but he's not. He's actually not that great of a running back, but against the Browns, over 400 yards in his career. He doesn't have over 300 yards 
against anyone else in the NFL in, in his career. For whatever reason, he sees brown and orange, and, and his eyes light up, and it happened again earlier this season when the Steelers played the Browns, and James Conner had yet another big game against them. So it, it's one of those things where you kind of go into the game as a defense. I, I don't know that you can necessarily over-adjust for that because it's still James Conner. It's still a running game that hasn't been able to get going, but you know, it also wouldn't surprise me if for whatever reason he just has another good game against the Browns. Yeah, and you know, it's it's been night and day with Pittsburgh's running attack. So their first five games, they played Browns the fifth game. They ran the ball really effectively. As a matter of fact, they ran the ball well. Those first five games, they gained more yards than they did the last 10. And they, they're averaging under three yards a carry uh, their last 10 games running the football. So when you look at it that way, if the Browns can't beat a one-win Jets team and can't beat a Steelers team with their backup quarterback, they probably don't deserve to be in the playoffs. That's sort of where they're at right now. You know, it's all been right there in front of them. And we can talk about what happened against the Jets, how they lost their top four wide receivers, but they still had a lot of talent on the football field and they still had more talent than the Jets on the football field. So you know, that was a game that they still probably should have won. And I know that I didn't change my pick when that news came out. A number of people on our staff didn't change their pick. I think everybody still felt the Browns were going to beat the Jets even without those guys. And then you've got Mason Rudolph. The Steelers are basically setting this up for you to win your way into the postseason. They're basically saying to you, uh, they don't really care if, if they keep you out or not. They're more focused on just getting everybody healthy to the playoffs. And the Browns have to take advantage of this and get that first postseason berth since 2002. And it's interesting. There will be a 10-win team in the AFC that does not make the playoffs. You saw there are currently eight teams that have 10 wins or better. Only seven will make the playoffs. When you look at the Steelers, um, the interesting thing offensively for Pittsburgh, they have some guys that are going to be problematic for the Browns. you got uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Chase Claypool has really come on. Big target that can run um, a, a receiver. And the Browns are struggling with safeties and their secondaries even a little beat up. Greedy Williams hasn't played all year, and Denzel Ward has been hobbled. So I guess those are the things that would concern you. Yeah, any, any team that can pass the ball aggressively down the field is going to concern you. And the Steelers got that going a little bit last week. You know, they've been such a short passing team for so long, and that's part of why their run game was struggling. And I think if they were still kind of that dink and dunk offense they've been running uh, for a lot of December – you'd feel better about this Browns defense going against that passing attack. But if they are going to open things up and throw the ball down the field, you do get concerned because we saw Sam Darnold take advantage of that. You know, we saw Ryan Tannehill a few weeks ago after the Browns, you know, blew that game wide open and the, the Titans made their run in the second half. He took advantage of it. Even Lamar Jackson took advantage of it uh, in the second half. And he had been struggling a little bit throwing the football this year. So Teams are able to throw the football down the field against this defense. And, you know, this, this safety room has just been ravaged by injuries going all the way back to Grant Delpit. And it's going to be a concern. You know, I don't know if, if the Browns and Steelers meet again in the playoffs. I don't know if it'll be a concern in that game. You got teams like the Bills lingering who like to attack down the field. Of course, we know about the Chiefs. You might have to play the Titans again. This pass defense is an issue, and I think the Steelers will probably try to attack it on Sunday. And really, the, the best attacking thing that the Browns have against a passing game down the field is the off, uh, defensive line. they got to have a big game. I mean, if, if Mason Rudolph has time to throw, that's, that is not going to be a good thing for the Browns' defense. No, it's not. And this is a guy that took 15 sacks last year in his 10 games. So you should be able to get to Mason Rudolph. Uh, Miles Garrett we talked about, but Olivier Vernon has been sort of a revelation this year. Maybe not a revelation, but you know a good comeback story this year after he got off to a slow start, finally got healthy, and he's playing well. You're just hoping that he can continue to stay on the field and continue to produce. Sheldon Richardson has been really good. Larry Ogunjobi, uh, Jordan Elliott inside. Those guys have to help Miles Garrett out and create pressure because, like you said, if, if your back end can't cover, you've got to create pressure and try and speed up that quarterback's clock a little bit and help that back end out. Well, the, the Browns have had some um, positives in the, the COVID testing area again this week. So contact tracing continues to go on. It's likely going to be a, a situation where they're not 100% certain who they have, who they can put out on the field until, you know, those inactives are due Sunday even. Yeah, and unfortunately for the Browns, uh, you know, 2021 is here and it still looks a lot like 2020. <laughs> we just don't know 
who's going to be on the field necessarily against the Steelers. You know, I do think there's good news. You, you know, you hope to have all those receivers back. You hope you're going to have Wyatt Teller back off injury. Jedrick Wills, you hope to have him back. So I, I think that, you know, you hope there's more good news than bad news, I guess. But this really is just what this NFL season, uh, what the whole last year ha- had been about, just kind of making this up on the fly and getting ready to make adjustments on the fly. Dan Lobby, Browns beat reporter here on Cleveland.com, as well as in the pages of The Plain Dealer. We're going to take a quick time out. When we return, we flip sides of the ball. We'll also talk about who we think is going to win and how this game will unfold. We're talking Browns Steelers. Playoffs on the line. More sports and less Levine. The weekend winner's edition will be right back. Stay with us, everyone. living in uncertain times, but you don't have to put your future on hold. At Tri-C, you can move ahead while staying safe and saving money. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, check out Tri-C's programs and resources, because Tri-C is where futures begin. Well, hello everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only $3.99 a month, you can get texts sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, you'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week. And it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash browns, the blue banner at the top of the page. Or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216 208 3965. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. To keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at SmileyOne.com. More sports and Les Levine. The Weekend Winners Edition continues. I'm Dave Bacon. We continue to talk Browns, Steelers. If the Browns win, they are in the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. Vegas has installed the Browns as a 10 favorite at home against the Steelers. Of course, part of that is because of the uh, quarterback situation where the Steelers have come out and said that they will, in fact, start Mason Rudolph, backup quarterback. Uh, The other part of it is the Browns' uh, offense has been pretty good. So we flip the script now. We'll welcome Dan Lobby back in, and we'll start talking some Browns' offense. Dan, when you look at the job um, that Baker Mayfield has done, we've touched on this a little bit um, in our year-end show. Boy, there's been a lot of growth, and, and you can see it. It's tangible, and I, I think you would go as far as to say the Browns probably feel they have the quarterback of the future. Yeah, you definitely feel a lot more comfortable about Baker Mayfield today than you did, even going back to that first Pittsburgh game uh, when he threw those two interceptions in the first half and that pick six early on. I think you definitely feel comfortable about going into next year and, and giving him a second year in the system. 
you know, picking up that fifth year option this off season. And, you know, maybe you start to talk extension this off season with him too. All, all of that has sort of dominoed since he kind of turned his season around after that last Pittsburgh game. But with Baker, it's really kind of about, kind of about checking things off. And I thought he checked off a big thing against Baltimore. That's a team that has given him problems in the past. And even though the Browns lost that game, it certainly wasn't because of Baker Mayfield. So I think he checked that box. And now this week, and maybe in a potential Steelers rematch in the postseason, he's got a chance to check off another box because he hasn't always played well against the Steelers, like I said, including this year. So this is an opportunity for him to uh, check off another box as you evaluate him moving forward. Well, he's already 10 wins this season and what he did last year. So the Browns won a whole lot more games with Baker Mayfield at quarterback than they did the, the couple of years before that. Um, as of now, you know, the Browns are expecting that uh, their wide receivers will be able to go. Um, they were close contacts who have text tested negative, and they're hoping to have Wyatt Teller and uh, Jedrick Wills as well. I, I think we might have underestimated how important those two offensive linemen uh, missing were and in, in what we saw was a little bit of a mess early on in part because of that offensive line for the Browns. And it's really important with Teller that, you know, we've got to remember Chris Hubbard is out, so it really should have been Hubbard there uh, replacing Teller. So you were kind of two steps down the depth chart going into that Jets game. So just getting Teller back, even if he's not 100%, is a huge upgrade. And Jedrick Wills has been really good this season, and we always focus on pass blocking, but I think he's been really important in this run game. This is a cutback run game. They love to give Nick Chubb those lanes to cut back in. And every now and again, you'll, you'll pay close attention to one of those cutbacks and you'll see it's Jedrick Wills who kind of gets that key block, allowing him to make that, that cut towards the end zone, especially, you know, when they're in the red zone and they run those plays. So having those two guys back is really enormous because this is a, an offense based around that offensive line, opening up holes and also protecting Baker Mayfield, whose numbers when he's not pressured are night and day versus when he is. Are you concerned at all the offensive game? Uh, they haven't been able to run the ball the last few games like they really need to be. I mean, if they're going to do anything against the better teams, they've got to have some of that, you know, we're going to run the ball down your throat. And, and it really hasn't been there the way I think everybody thought it was going to be midway through the season. I think some of it has to do with game plan. You know, you go back to that Giants game, I think they probably could have run the ball in that game if they wanted to, but they decided to kind of control through the air, short passing game, and then take some shots down the field. I think Kevin Stefanski has kind of leaned a little more on Baker Mayfield and allowed him to just do more in this offense. Now, Sunday was a day when the running game just wasn't there, and, and some of that was because the Jets were really good. Some of it is because maybe the Browns got away from it too early. I think they did get away from it too early. So, you know, I... Some of these numbers are because I'm seeing a football team and I'm seeing an offense that now that they've been playing in a little better weather, now that they have a little more faith in Baker Mayfield and, and how he's taking care of the football with Sunday aside, of course, I, I think they feel really comfortable kind of using the pass to loosen things up a little bit for the run. And I think that's been more of an emphasis than the run game. So it's kind of the evolution of Kevin Stefanski's offense, if you will, with Baker Mayfield, at quarterback. Right. It, it's his offense evolving. It's, you know, it, it is kind of the weather getting better. They got to play in Jacksonville and Nashville and, and the weather wasn't terrible against Baltimore. But yeah, it's that evolution of the offense plus kind of a growing trust that Baker Mayfield's not going to turn the football over. Well, it, it will be a challenge. You know, I, I mentioned the struggles of Pittsburgh running the football. There haven't been many struggles defensively for the Steelers. You know, they're, they're banged up, but they're still really good. Um, you know, TJ Watt, is a problem, has always been a problem for the Browns. The rest of the league is finding out uh, just how big of a problem T.J. Watt can be. And, and then they got a steal with Minka Fitzpatrick making that trade last year with the Dolphins. Um, he's a pro bowler. And you also have Cam Hayward. So you got two pro bowlers up front pressuring a quarterback that has struggled under pressure a little bit. It's been really incredible what Mike Tomlin and, and this defense have done. Having lost Devin Bush in that Browns game, they lose Bud Dupree. Uh, they, they lose the linebacker that replaced Devin Bush for a few games. I mean, it's been incredible how they've managed to continue to just be the Pittsburgh Steelers on defense. We saw this defense essentially carry them close to the playoffs last year. And this year, it's you know kind of been more of the same as that, you know, that offense got off to a hot start and then was kind of up and down. But this defense is still really good. 
one of the best defenses in football. And, you know, again, that's why you sort of love this test and you love this opportunity for Baker Mayfield and this run game and Kevin Stefanski, because these are the teams you want to see this offense go up against. and want to see uh, what Stefanski can cook up against them. And I think a guy like TJ Watt and Cam Hayward, another reason why you need Wyatt Teller. Wyatt and, Teller. and you certainly don't want Kendall Lamb protecting the blind. We saw we don't want Kendall Lamb protecting the blind side in that game against the Jets. Yeah, he was. Uh, he had some issues, and even you know when he went to the screen game a little bit, he, he had some issues. He, he, the timing was all off in a lot of areas. So, uh, yeah, you want to have Jedrick Wills out there. You want to have Jack Conklin on the other side, and and you want to have those three guys in the middle, uh, making sure you know Joel Batonio has gone against Cam Hayward a million times in his career, and you want to make it a million and one on Sunday. Uh, have that full offensive line group together. When you look at um... The thing that gets Baker Mayfield in this offense is in trouble is when they turn the ball over. And Fitzpatrick is a guy who is one of the reasons, along with Watt, that the Steelers lead the NFL in creating turnovers. So I, I, I think that's going to be critically important. Um, Baker's got to take care of the football, even if it means, hey, we're, we got to punt. Okay, punts are good. Turnovers are bad. At, at, if, if you're giving me one or the other, I'm taking the punt 100% of the time. I think that's been the biggest progression in Baker Mayfield's game. You know, again, his numbers under pressure are not great, but one of the things you see is he's not turning the ball over under pressure. And I think back to that first Steelers game, we all remember the pick six, but his second pick was a, a play when he was running out of the pocket and he really just threw the ball up for grabs. And it, it was a play that a guy that has started at that point, 30 plus games in his career shouldn't make. And now he's erased a lot of those plays. He's not afraid to just throw the football away he's, you know, it's even cost him some intentional grounding flags, but you'll even take that over taking a really bad sack or turning the football over. And that's been why Baker Mayfield has been so much better. He's getting more aggressive now, but he's also protecting the football, you know, outside of those fumbles uh, on Sunday against the Jets. All right, let's, uh, let's, it's time to come to the part of our show where we decide what we think this game will look like, who we think will win. I'll let you go first. Who, uh, what do you see happening? What do you, what do you foresee as uh, important things in this game, and, and what do you think will happen? I, I just feel like this team has come too far. This coaching staff has done too good of a job. And you know, like I said earlier, the Steelers clearly look at this game, and they don't view it as a must-win. It's why they're starting Mason Rudolph. I think this team has come too far to lose this final football game that could keep them out of the playoffs. Now, I don't know if they're going to cover that spread. I, I still feel like that line is a little high, especially if the Steelers have all their defenders out there. But I think the Browns are going to win this game somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 24 to 17. Yeah, I, again, I, I always take the caveat with Baker and, and this offense. If they don't turn the ball over, I think they win the game. Um, and what I believe is the Steelers are going to be shuffling guys in and out. I, I think Connor will be on a, uh, on a, a carry count. Uh, you know, they, they may get to 10, 11 carries with James Connor and say, okay, you know, he's coming off a quad injury where they sent him out an extra week. That's an important thing to remember about him. And the last thing in the world you, you want to do if you're Mike Tomlin is have somebody unavailable for the first week of the playoffs that you need to – I mean, they were awful with, uh, with, with James Conner out. That offense was not good. Um, so I think he's going to play it really uh, close to the vest, and I think he's going to rest guys and, and try not to get anybody hurt. Yeah, I just, I just don't think there's any reason for Pittsburgh to push it. And I know the Browns would love to be in this position next season. They would have loved to have been in this position this, this week had they taken care of business against the Jets. But when you get things wrapped up early, this is what you get to do. And I think it's actually going to benefit the Browns this time around. Some key guys on defense that, that have to show up if the Browns are, um, are going to get it done, even against Mason Rudolph, but particularly against that running game. Well, outside of the you know the the stars like Denzel Ward and Miles Garrett, I think if they get Ronnie Harrison back, I think that's really important. Uh, you know, he could play anywhere they need him to play. He can play in the box. He can play deep safety if he fills in for Andrew Sandejo. I just think you can't go out there with with your safeties as Carl Joseph as he's available and and Sheldrick Redwine. I think you've got to have a guy in Ronnie Harrison that can make some plays. You know, get after the quarterback, force some turnovers. I think he's really vital. And then I mentioned Olivier Vernon earlier, having that other guy, if Pittsburgh kind of helps against Miles Garrett and double, triple teams him, having Olivier Vernon continue to play well and step up and create that pressure is really important. Or somebody else on that line. If, if Garrett's getting double and triple teams, somebody who, ha who is getting single 
single blocking needs to beat that and, and get after uh, Rudolph. They have to get after Rudolph. Yeah, for sure. And if you can create pressure up the middle, you know, with Sheldon Richardson, Larry Ogunjobi, uh, maybe one of these linebackers really shows up. If they have Jacob Phillips back, that would be big because, you know, I think they miss B.J. Goodson just in the sense of he is the guy that wears the green sticker. He's the guy that makes your calls for you. I think that's a really important role. And I think they missed him. And, and he's kind of a thumper in the run game. So one of those linebackers is going to have to step up and, and give them at least a little something on Sunday. Yeah, I would agree. You know, Goodson is not an all pro by any stretch, but he's a guy who can run and tackle and, and they need that in the middle of this defense. Dan Lobby, Browns beat reporter here on cleveland.com as well as in the pages of Plain Dealer as always. We appreciate the time. Hopefully we're talking next week about the first round playoff matchup for the Browns the first time in 17 years. Uh, let's hope we can do that. All right. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year, Dan. Appreciate it. Well, that'll do it for this edition of More Sports and Les Levine, the weekend winner's edition. Want to remind you, Les Levine will be back in the chair Monday from 6 to 7. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you again next week.